Nine months after arriving in the championship, Southampton are on the verge of being promoted out of it at the first attempt. A chance to complete back-to-back -back promotions to the Premier League after that seven-year absence. They didn't want to leave it this late, but having spurned the opportunity at Middlesbrough, they need a win to render events at Upton Park academic. A draw for Saints will leave West Ham needing to beat Hull City by four goals to go above them on goal difference. If Saints lose to a Coventry City side already relegated, then a win for the Hammers will leave Southampton third and in the playoffs, having been in the top two since September. And Kelvin Davis making his 250th league start for Southampton this afternoon on this the final game of the season. The back four, Butterfield maintains his place ahead of Richardson, Fonte, Hoyvelt, Fox and Morgan Schneidling, Schneidling even, having come off the bench to get back into uh, active football last weekend, starts in place of Jack Cork who dropped to the bench. So Schneidlin will partner Dean Hammond in the centre midfield. They'll be sided by Lalana and Gooley. Lambert and Sharp continue up front, nearly 50 goals between them this season. And we are underway for the last time this season and for what Saints fans hope will be the last time in the Championship for at least another year. Saints playing from left to right, they immediately had the ball in the penalty area. Gooley almost got them off to the perfect start and it was just prodded away from him for an early Southampton... Well, it's a goal kick. I think everyone thought the defender had cleared it. It is a goal kick, so early drama in the first 15 seconds here. And Saints then, with those two changes, Chaplow injured and Cork onto the bench. If you want to know just how well hand-picked Coventry are on paper for Saints this afternoon, their away record is 1-1, drawn 6, lost 15. They are woeful on their travels, Coventry. Woeful. They've scored 13 goals all season, but they might get one here as they get into the penalty area and backtracking with Schneidlin to stop the ball getting as far as Connor Thomas. And it's a corner to Coventry on the right. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Those little counter-attacks, you've got to be aware, you've got to be switched on, you cannot relax. They've taken the corner quickly as well. Cross comes in from McSheffrey towards the back post, Hoyvelt heads it half away, it's still in the penalty area. Good strength from Willis, it goes across the box, McSheffrey left foot in and Kelvin Davis has to parry it away for another corner. Well, the first, uh, the first save has gone to Coventry and uh, Kelvin Davis has had to make it. Coventry on the attack then, getting the ball down and... And, and giving Saints a little bit of a problem. McSheffrey and Baker combining again. Cross will come in from the right-hand side. This time it's over, everybody. It's a Saints goal kick, but you have to say it has been a bitty start from Saints, and it looks like there's some heavy legs there, Dave. A few nerves perhaps creeping in. Well, it's a, it's a big deal. There'll be a lot of tension, a lot of tension around the ground there'll be today. A lot of fans up talking to were edgy and nervous. And they, it's, it, the Saints are in the driving seat, Adam. They, 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 they're up there. They've got a, a much better advantage than West Ham. They've got to make sure they win it today. Now, can Lambert settle things down? Ball out on the right to Hammond. Lifts it in first time into the penalty area. Away by Craney. Chested down neatly in the end by McSheffrey. And Hussey will clear down this left wing. Up towards the head of McDonald, battling with Fonte, who should win that battle. Gets tripped by McDonald, stays on his feet, into the centre circle, goes past two. He's got three men ahead of him. Fonte still going, getting towards the penalty area. Then he lays it out wide to Gooley. Gooley from the edge of the box. Early ball. Lallana on the body, deflects the curve and have the lead. Saints have scored. Hit first time. Billy Sharp got the final touch. Murphy sprawled across the six-yard area, but having started the game badly, Southampton have the vital goal here in the Championship. Saints won, Coventry nil. Well, that's a great piece of play from Fonte. He's kept his head, he's brought it out from the back, he's attacked all the way down the middle of the field, plays the ball out wide, ball's knocked back across, comes out to Lalana, strikes it just outside of the edge of the box, little deflection and in past the goalkeeper's left, one up for Saints. Billy Sharp is claiming that one. The final deflection, or is it Lalana? Well, Sharp was celebrating like he got the final touch and he's pointing in the centre circle saying that's my goal and Lalana agrees with him. Sharp turned it in, difficult to see from anywhere around the ground, but it's Sharp's ninth goal for Saints, his 19th goal of the season 
and Billy Sharp and Lambert now have 50 goals between them and that's the sort of firepower Dave that gets you promoted absolutely and, and that's the break they wanted Adam you know they get that early goal we've got something like 16 minutes on the clock now they can settle they know they've got the nose up front keep a clean sheet and you're home and dry good piece of play Adam and Gooley from the right now attacking the penalty area on the inside right he's got Butterfield on the overlap looks for the early cross corner Saints off the hussy now well, the game has turned on its head. Well, they've got the crowd right on the edge of the seats again now. Now, Sharp with a the goal then. He's ninth for Southampton. He's 19th of this championship campaign. And it's Danny Fox who will walk across who's still yet to score a goal for Saints. He hasn't scored a goal now for over two years. Despite taking lots of free kicks with that excellent left foot. But he's got a corner now in front of those commentary fans away to our right. Fox will take it into the penalty area as well. Fonte with a stooping header and it's 2-0! And surely now that is the goal that could send Saints back to the Premier League. It's taken to the last game of the season for Jose Fonte to score his first goal of the season. And it could, could be worth £90 million to the football club. Southampton 2, Coventry 0, two goals in three minutes. Well, you could say Fonte has made one and scored one. He's had a little bit of a, a, a bad run of late, Adam, but boy, I tell you what, he's done the business today. Ball's come over from the right from the corner. He's headed that one. Smack on the forehead, hit the floor, bounced over the defender on the line to the net, sends two up. Well, we said, chatting, didn't we, that we thought they might get a double burst in the first half before the game that might just settle things down that's what happens when they score here more often than not this season when they've got one here they've gone on to get two quite quickly and they've done it again already beaten Coventry City twice this season 4-2 at the Rico in November afternoon where Chris and Dave had a thriller and 2-1 in the FA Cup when Saints kids came to the fore long distance shot Tess Davis and actually it's turned around by Davis and it will be a corner to Coventry City Already had to make two saves. And now Fox tries to get forward, but he hits the early ball into the feet of Lalana. On to Sharp. Sharp pulls away on the left wing, level with the penalty area. Fox in support. Low ball towards the edge of the penalty area. Dummy from Lalana left it for Cork. And then Gooley will hit Butterfield out on the right again. Good ball from Butterfield to Lambert. Right-hand corner of the penalty area. Butterfield on the overlap. Low ball into the six-yard box. Might come out. Oh, how's Lallana not scored? Blocked by Jordan Clark. Right in the six-yard area. And just as it looked like Lallana was going to get on the score sheet, Dave. That's a tremendous block. And actually, I'll give credit to the teenager. It was Jordan Willis who made the block. Well, it was a good block, but it was some wonderful play from Southampton. First have gone down the left, they changed the play in stages, worked the ball across to the other side, then down to the right-hand side, put the ball across the box, finishes up with Lalana, gets his shot in, and the Coventry player gets there, gets his body there and gets the block, but good play. Would have been a nice way for Lalana to celebrate his 150th appearance for the club as Cork chips the ball in towards Sharp. Back to goal, 25 yards out, Lambert pops up on the right. Lambert with the early ball into the penalty, looking for Gooley. Almost kicked Craney as he headed the ball low and cleared it. Goes back out to Saints though, just inside the Coventry half. Snydlin across the centre circle to Hoyvelt. Jos Hoyvelt pings it back out to the right wing. Cork just about keeps it in with his head. Butterfield will get there first. Hits it straight back to Cork. Somehow they're keeping the ball. He drills it across the box and it can't be controlled by Lambert or Lalana. And it goes out to Coventry on the far side. But they're just starting to play with a swagger now. And well in command now. Cork coming out to the right-hand side and whipping the ball in with real pace on it there. Four minutes to half-time. Saints lead 2-0. West Ham lead 1-0. BBC Radio, Solent Sport. You don't want to take anything for granted, but Saints well in command now. They're in the driving seat. They're leading 2-0. They were playing some good stuff uh, just before half-time. Knocking the ball around and denying Coventry the ball. And I think that's what they'll do the second half. Gooley attacking now, middle of the pitch, 30 yards out, out to the right is Cork. Early ball into the penalty, Gooley meets it and heads it high over the crossbar, it was a guilted chance. Now let me just tell you something Adam, we've seen Gooley come on in different positions, that's where you want them, getting into the box, I think he's got the capability of getting goals, he's played that one out to the right, fed himself into the box, the cross has come in, he's got between the defenders, headed over the top, but that's the type of movement you're looking for uh, from Gooley. 
Saints trying to stretch Coventry, making them concentrate. In towards the feet of Lambert, leaves it for Sharp. Back to Lambert to pull the trigger, it's over the crossbar. What a goal that would have been. Good kick, Coventry. Well, that's top class player, that. Good play. Uh, players playing the ball the way they face, going into them, playing one touch football back in the edge of the box. The, uh, the Sharp pushed the ball back to Lambert. He fired with his right foot. Great effort, Adam. There's no doubt, by the way, is the day that Sharp and Lambert are starting, starting to strike well, the, up the, an understanding. They're the, the getting an understanding, they're forming a partnership now, and we both know they can both get goals. Now, a long Fox ball looking in. for Sharp, who is onside as he could first touch Sharp into the penalty area. Two defenders within the Saints fans want a penalty. Sharp ends up sprawled on the floor. Jordan Clark was the man bustling him off the possession. And Saints will try and come again. It's fallen for Lambert out on the right. He's got a man ahead of him who is Cork. Cork looks for the cross. Blocked by Hussey. Corner Southampton. Thought Sharp was through there. The flag stayed down. He was onside. He just couldn't get the ball in front of his feet, Dave. No, sometimes it just gets trapped. You can't just get it uh, that little bit further forward to get your shot away. But in fairness, you know, Adam, I was talking about in the first half, since keeping Coventry pressed up high and in their own half, that's exactly what they're doing. Total in command now. And one of the problems Coventry have got is when scenes get possession of the ball, uh, their movement on and off the ball, their rotation is excellent. And well, they just can't get the ball back. Well, Willis is in a, he's off the pitch for the moment, which means they're lacking a centre half for the corner. Fox into the near post. Might fall for Sharp. Hits it on the turn block. Rebound. 3 0. Jos Hoyveld celebrates with his arms aloft again. That is the goal that seals promotion to the Premier League for Southampton. Hoyveld's eighth of the season. The whole ground celebrates. And Southampton have done the job they had to do. They are going back to the big time. Saints 3, Coventry City 0. Well, once again, it's a corner from the right-hand side. A set play. Uh, Coventry couldn't defend. It gets knocked down. And who gets on the end of it but the big fella at the back? How many goals has he got now, Adam? Eight. Eight goals from centre-back. Boy, I tell you what, that, that's great, isn't it? When you think, you know you're going to get your big men up and you're going to get... And this is only half a season from him. Yeah. He's got more than Chaplo, Hammond, Schneidlin and Court combined. That's how important these goals have been. Listen to the noise around St Mary's. Stand up if you're going up, is the cry. And most of the 32,000 have just stood up. And all age groups here today, Adam. A lot of young, young people here today. Uh, young boys, young girls. Great to see. Great family club, this. Both centre-backs on the score sheet here on the final game of the season. I'm sure... We weren't necessarily expecting that. We were all talking about Lambert and Sharp. As the long ball comes in for Ricky Lambert, nods it down, might for the back post for Lallana! And Adam Lallana has a 13th lucky for him this season. Saints are steamrolling Coventry now. It is 4-0. The party is well and truly underway. And the Premier League is coming back to St Mary's. Lallana aptly gets a goal on the final day. He's been at standing all season. And he celebrates with his players by the corner flag as the crowd rise to applaud their team. Well, he's a, a player this season who, for me, has really matured, really come on. He's a lovely lad. And uh, he gets he gets a goal, knocked down from uh, Lambert, gets on the end of it, into the box. He's a boy with terrific potential, great skill and a great player for Southampton. A lucky 13. 4-0 and we have not entered the final quarter of the afternoon yet so the tension has dissipated the worry is over the nerves have gone and now Southampton perhaps in the final quarter can put on the sort of relaxed performance they'd have been hoping for the sort of relaxed performance Coventry started the afternoon putting on but now Saints can enjoy this day the players should revel in this now let, let me tell you something the fans will be looking and waiting for next season's fixture list to come out to see who who they're going to get it on first game, Adam. Yeah, and uh, Southampton fans will be looking forward. I'll tell you what I won't uh, be pleased about, Dave. Less games. We love our football. There's only 38 in the Premier League as Coventry try and get an attack going on the edge of the D, which breaks down out on the left. Listen, the one thing I'm thinking about now, I can go away and relax now and have my holiday. Oh, you worry about yourself. <laughs> I like my football. 
I'm, I'm just pleased that they've gone up at him. Baker cuts inside, fires it left footed, saved by Calvin Davis. Is a good one. Two good saves by Davis this afternoon, if not three. And when he's been called upon after a quiet period of doing nothing, once again Davis shows his class. Fair play to Baker. It was a good shot, but it was quite close to the keeper. But it was just had too much sting on it for him to hold. Corner you, to Coventry. You've got to say, Adam, he's been outstanding, hasn't he, all Another of the good seasons? Season. Baker lifts the corner in towards the back post. Good nod down from Craney, and it's volleyed away by Butterfield out of the penalty area. Kelvin Davis will be furious now, Dave, if he loses this clean sheet this afternoon. Oh, he won't want to. Oh, he to won't him. go on the goal against them now. I spoke to him Thursday. He said to me he was livid. The last few they haven't kept, so uh, he's desperate to keep a clean What I love about the boy, he's such a good pro, he's a yeah. nice lad, he works hard, uh, he's a, there's a bit of humility about absolutely. him, and, and he's been he's been a top-class player for Southampton right. Football Club, and he's absolutely been outstanding and he's worth uh, for a number of seasons because now. Because he decided to stay with the club, Dave, when things were bad, he was on his way to West Ham to sign for them, when Nicola Cortese persuaded him to turn around and stay in League One, when he could have gone to the Premier League and West Ham, and it's paid off for him now on his 250th league start for the club. He will celebrate return to the Premier League where he's played with Sunderland, of course, years ago. Well, I think he's been an excellent servant for Southampton Football Club and I think the fans do appreciate that as well. Lambert holds it up for Saints. Back to goal, 30 yards out, looking for Gooley on the inside left. Can't quite find it, but a lovely slip to... Lovely 1-2! Oh, and he couldn't find the finish! What a way to round off his season that would have been. The 1-2 was beautiful with Lalana, And Lambert's gutted, he just couldn't find the perfect finish. Well, it was super play that. Cork involved as well. He had Gooley running to his left. He's played it, he got it back and really had the goal at his mercy and uh, he's hit the goalkeeper with it and you know what eight times out of ten he just stuck that past the keeper Coventry have possession two minutes of stoppage time two minutes of stoppage time we are entering Cody McDonald trying to think about a long range shot just brushed off the ball by Hoyvelt who gets caught by him actually it's a free kick to Saints and the fans all standing around the perimeter of St Mary's now waiting to get out onto the pitch the photographers massing by the dugouts we've even got a Japanese flag being waved down here Adam that'll be the impact around the world as well you know yeah. Tadanari Lee you just feel that uh, commercially uh, the, the club will be better known out there in the Far East that as well will, and it will be from going into the Premier League Dave it's, it's played all over the world the Premier League through every continent it's the most popular league in the world and Southampton are back on the footballing map that is for sure and a fan has unfortunately broken through early he needs to get off he's ruined that little finish to the game they've had to stop the match what a fool and what a shame everyone waiting now he's just delaying the inevitable so they'll get him out and uh, Schneidlin will carry on the game now the anticipation around St Mary's one minute of stoppage time left the fans now trying to overrun the referee blows his whistle and that is that Southampton are back in the big time Marcus Liebherr's vision for the club has been realised and Nicola Cortese and Nigel Adkins have smashed the five year plan taken Saints from the verge of oblivion to the Premier League in just three years next season it's back to Old Trafford Anfield and the Emirates with the thousands of fans pouring onto the pitch now here at St Mary's and they will party long into the night to celebrate what's been an outstanding achievement. The best footballing side in the Championship have got what they deserve. Southampton have clinched promotion back to the top flight of English football. Dave Merrington. Well, I have not seen a better side this season in Southampton. I've said it throughout the, the, the season, Adam, the commentaries from early on. I haven't seen a better side than Southampton. Uh, they move the ball around well, they pass the ball, they interchange well, their movement on and off the ball has been great, they've been consistent, they've scored goals, and right from the back, Kelvin Davis has been outstanding. The two centre-backs today, Hoybeld and Fonte have been brilliant, Butterfield's got up the flanks with Fox, two men in midfield, Schneidl and Hammond and Cork came on, and of course you've got Gooley and Lalana, Lambert and uh, Sharp up the front, they, they've done well, they've, they've had a great result today, but looking now, down on the pitch the fans are on there stewards have got no chance of holding them all they want to do is celebrate and congratulate their players and their manager and rightly so they've done brilliant four goal scoring heroes this afternoon sharp fonte hoyevelt and lalana two in each half an easy 4-0 win in the end no last day nerves for saints 
They are back in the Premier League and 27 players plus the management should take huge credit for achieving back-to-back promotions. Jos Hoivelt is just aloft with his arms like he does when he scores. Loving the fact that about 10 fans are holding him up in the middle of the pitch. What a folk hero he's become at the club over the last few months. Eight goals from centre-half. Where's Ricky Lambert? I'm not too sure. He's down near the front. They'll do well to pick the big man up and loft him up. Well, they've got the big man up there now. Goals. There he is. 27 league goals, Dave. There's a massive achievement in his first year playing at the championship level. And now he's going to be a Premier League player at the age of 30. Well, when he first came to the club, you know, uh, it took him a while to settle. And then he started scoring goals and people said to me, yeah, but will he score them at a higher level? And I said, tell you what, you give him the supply. And I believe this boy can get your goals. And you know what? I've been proved right. And I think if he gets the right type of service in the Premier League, he'll score goals up there as well. Nigel Adkins first out as you'd expect to celebrate with his players Calvin Davis up next and it is a massive day for Southampton Football Club seven years since they were relegated out of the Premier League they are back after the club was reborn under Marcus Lieber and Nicola Cortese and that investment of over £30 million pounds in the last three years has paid off they have gone back to back promotions into the top flight of English football and they are back in the big time and Nigel Adkins has masterminded that return the manager celebrating with fans below us and the fans they can't see the pitch the pitch now there is no grass to see everybody crammed onto the pitch, the seats are mostly empty, the chairman and Les Reed, the head of the academy behind me, Mark Biakoski comes up alongside, Jack Cork and Dean Hammond have made it, and the players now, as Kelvin Davis stands on the rostrum, start to celebrate their return to the Premier League, 46 games, they've won 26 of them, they've been immense here at St Mary's, and they now, again the rewards for all that hard work, Each player will get, no doubt, applauded separately and cheered by the fans. We'll let them enjoy their moment. And the wives, family members all up with them, the staff, Dean Wilkins and Andy Crosby, massive grins on their faces away to my right. And when we get a chance to speak to them, let them have their moment, we will do that here on BBC Radio Solent Sport. Here goes the champagne, Southampton are back in the big time. A return to the Premier League, a £90 million windfall. And Saints have done it in style. Dean Hammond lets go of his little child so he can celebrate with everyone else. It has been an enormous effort. And the captain has come on strong in the closing stages of the season to guide the team through. Let's see if we can grab a word with a few in just a moment's time. Dean Hammond, congratulations. How are you doing, right? What about that then? It's unbelievable. It's- you know, we worked so hard this season and it's been a nervy week, I've got to be honest, but you know, we've turned up today and we've played some great stuff and we thoroughly deserve this. Uh, it's just amazing, the fans are unbelievable, 
what a group of lads and uh, you know, I'm close to tears, it's amazing. I know you'd like to have done it last week, but it seems a little more special doing it here at home, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice to do it last week, it would have felt a bit easier, but you know, doing it in front of here at your own ground, we've been brilliant here all season. And, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say really. It's just, it's amazing. It's a dream come true. You know, everyone wants to play in the Premier League, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do that now. Yeah, and you all bought into the idea three years ago when you all decided to stay at, come to the club or stay at the club in the lower divisions, and it's paid off, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the dream was when I came here in League One to to get to the Premier League, and we've done that now. I mean. The chairman's been amazing, the manager's been amazing, the coaching staff, you know, there's probably six or seven of us here that are here when we're in League One, bottom minus ten, we're Premier League team now, unbelievable. Back to back promotions as well, what an effort for two seasons. Yeah, I mean, at the start of the season, I don't think many people believed that we could do it, we did. We, we've got an unbelievable team spirit here and the quality of the player is fantastic and we've proved that we're... We're one of the best teams in the league. Well, I'll let you take a swig of champagne. And just, just finally, Dean, you've had a nice, strong finish to the season. You've started the last six games. When the chips were down, the captain's come good. You've got to be thrilled. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously hard for any player when you're out of the team, but we've got such competition here. And, you know, everyone wants to play, and I'm so happy I played a part towards the end because you could say that's, you know, it's an important part of the season. I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled. So thrilled. Well done, mate. Terrific. Congratulations. I speak to him, get a word with Jos Hoyvelt. Jos, hey. how about this? What a good decision to come to Southampton for you. Amazing, wasn't it? Hey. <laughs> Amazing. You must have seen it in the stars. Yeah, definitely. Uh, from day one, I already felt uh, a mutual, uh, how do you say, that, that, that you like each other. Uh, was a click. And, uh, yeah, I didn't dream of this before. but. Uh, and another goal today. Another goal as well. I didn't want to end up seven. I want to make eight. So, uh, very happy with that. Yeah, hey, listen, you played in the Champions League, but what's it going to mean to play in the English Premier League? I think that's a crown of my career. Well done. A crown of my career. So, celebrating your story about one of the heroes of the season, undoubtedly, for Southampton. And uh, to my right, Dan Harding, Jason Punchin, holding up a Premier League banner with Jack Cork. A turnaround for his year for Jason Punchin, that is for sure. Even some of the young lads are here as well as you'd expect to play the small part. Tad Laurie Lee around to my right. And uh, it's been a pretty good day for Saints and they've done well to organise this the way they have for it to work as well, that is for sure. We'll see if we can make our way through the crowd to speak to a few more players. Jason, we're live on BBC Radio. Just tell me what that means to you, having gone through so much of this club to get through here now to the Premier League. It's amazing for me, you know. It's, it's, it's been a rocky time since I've been here, but I've always said that we want to get to the Premier League and it's great that we're here and I'm just pleased. I'm pleased that we all done it as a unit. Everybody's played a part, whether it was one or two games, and everybody's added to it. Yeah, and of course, nice to get on the pitch on the final day and get right into the celebrations. Yeah, definitely, you know, it's always good to get in there, you know. And obviously, it was good to get on, considering the situation, but I'm just happy that we're there now. It's been quite a journey, hasn't it, for the club and for you, but to turn around the club the way they have, from almost extinction to the Premier League in three years, is a heck of an achievement, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, you know, the chairman's done really well, you know, to turn it around and get it to where, where it needs to be now. And now, now, obviously, we're there, we just need to stay there now. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Cheers. Jason Punchin live on BBC Radio Solent Sports. And behind me, local hero, Adam Lalana is just taking some photos. We'll get a word with him any minute now. Adam, congratulations, oh, yeah, mate. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm good. Elated. Um, hey? Oh, yeah. Strange emotion. I don't think it's uh, really sunk in yet. Uh, we've been fighting for this, this day for a couple of weeks now. And we finally got there with a convincing win. It's, it's brilliant. Mate, I have to say, when we spoke Thursday, we both said, everybody stay calm, you'll win 3-0, 4-0 will do, won't it? Yeah, um, yeah, I would have taken 1-0, but obviously last 10, 15 minutes was, the, n the nerves weren't there, we, we knew we'd done it, and brilliant, credit to the whole football club. Yeah, and credit for you, I mean, that was some ovation you got when you came off and you substituted, didn't you? Yeah, it was, it was lovely. Uh, Obviously, it's, it's a team game, and we've been brilliant for each other, week in, week out. And your goals, 13 now for the season, nice to score on this sort of occasion. Yeah, it was nice, obviously, because Billy got the first one. Uh, as I said, we, Josh got in another, we all chip in for the team, and that's what good teams do. Yeah, um, Billy Sharp seems to have stolen a goal off you, really, doesn't he? Yeah, I'll give it to him, he deserves it. He's come in, he scored eight, nine goals. 
It's made the difference, if I'm being honest. That's exactly what we need. It's, it's brilliant. And what about the back-to-back -back promotions? That's quite an achievement, isn't it? After relegation, it just makes it that much more special. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still as an at home yet. Well, it will do when you line up in the Premier League at Old Trafford next season. Yeah, it will. It will. I'm I sure it will. Nah, thank you very much. Well done. Ricky Lambert, just a quick word for us live on the BBC. 27 Championship goals, your first year in the Championship and now you're in the Premier League. How about that for a story? I, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't describe. It's all. It's all overwhelming how good this is. Like, I've been a long pit road, me personally, so yeah. but to get here it means everything. You're turning into a good red wine, you're getting better with age, Rick, and what's that down to? Fitness, professionalism, and uh, the club I'm at. And what about this site here? Let's just talk about what happened at full time. That was some explosion, wasn't it? What? Well, sorry, say that again. Full time, Jordan. the fans on the pitch, Jordan. that was some moment, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was brilliant. Jordan. Absolutely Jordan. brilliant. Jordan. It was a good job, I wasn't at I was the, the other end of the stick the field because I wasn't getting off. Congratulations. Nice one, thank you. There we go, Ricky Lambert, Adel Alana, Jason Pudchen and Dean Hammond and Jos Hoyvelt live on BBC Radio Sony Sport. I think we're going to have a few speeches now. And today, I think uh, the gamble that we played, uh, how we played today, the, the setup of how we played today, led us to a very good result.